the township uh, continues to uh, uh, monitor the status of COVID-19 and we're taking appropriate actions in this ever-changing situation. We have an emergency community control group, the CCG we call it, and that consists of myself, the deputy mayor, the CAO and the department heads uh, of the different departments and we communicate daily and have made a number of changes to the services uh, as the situation evolves. Um, the, uh, these decisions have been carefully thought out uh, in consideration of safety of the staff and of the people and we're doing our best to flatten the curve and limit the spread of COVID-19. Our municipal facilities have been closed and playgrounds and fitness areas are off limits for the citizens' protection. Um, staff are working remotely to ensure the business of the township continues. They're available by phone, available by email. They've taken laptops home. We're able to, those that need to hook up to our network are hooked up to our network. Um, we are not in a state of emergency. We assessed and analyzed that very carefully and decided that we could provide the services that were necessary in the circumstance without having to declare an emergency municipally, given that the province has declared one provincially. So we can work uh, with, uh, with our staff and with the province uh, without having to, at this point in time, declare an emergency in the municipality. Our Chief Administrative Officer, Jeff Smith, uh, has been in constant contact with other CAOs in their organizations across the province. And uh, he, he confers with me and we confer with council on a regular basis. And uh, this is the decision that, uh, that we've made with respect to that. So we're encouraging everybody to follow the tips provided by the health unit to protect ourselves, the washing hands, the sneezing and coughing method, the avoiding touching what you shouldn't be touching and contact and clean and disinfect and then of course the social distancing of, of at least two meters. Um, so we continue to, uh, to meet the challenges with this emergency community control group. And we're keeping uh, the public informed through Facebook, uh, Twitter, our website which is updated daily with developments uh, we're staying in tune with what the provincial government says and the federal government says. And as I say, if people uh, want uh, to contact us, uh, then, uh, then they can contact us by email or by, or by phone. Uh, we met as a council, had a virtual meeting today um, to allow um, social distancing. And we um, amended our procedure bylaws that were necessary to accomplish that. And we authorized some forgiveness of principal, oh, sorry, of interest and penalty on uh, property taxes and on water and wastewater charges, arrears uh, for forgiveness of the penalties and interest for a period of time, for April through to the end of May, basically. And then we'll, we'll assess it uh, again at that period of time. If people had, uh, if they're NSF payments that have happened because of uh, um, not being able to make payments up to this point since the outbreak, then we are forgiving any charges with respect to that. If there are um, pre-authorized payment uh, programs uh, that um, are set up, then we, we will look at adjusting those as people want. And for payments coming up, uh, we have uh, deferred the necessity of making making those payments without penalty and interest. We also, um, as a council, made a donation of $2,500 to our local food bank, uh, the Elmville and, and District Food Bank, to help them out and encourage people to do the same. Uh, and we have wor we're working with the food bank to allow them to continue operation on a, in a controlled and safe fashion. Uh, so that enables them to deal with the, the clients uh, on an ongoing basis and not leave the clients in a lurch. We worked with the Red Cross who uh, are still in need of blood and want to do um, a blood uh, donation uh, a campaign on April the 11th. So we're allowing them under uh, safe controls to do that at our Elmville Community Centre on April the 11th. 
So we're, we're as I say, being proactive and, and yet being uh, safe uh, in the situation. We're certainly continually getting the message out to people that uh, this isn't just something that applies to other people in other countries, uh, uh, but it applies to, uh, to us here in our community that uh, we have to be strict now. We hear it. We hear the doctors say on the news, we've got to get uh, ahead of the curve uh, and not assume that it applies to somebody else. We have had uh, a death from this in, in Muskoka, uh, and sorry, in the Simcoe area. And uh, so what we are doing is, is, is what I described earlier. We have closed facilities uh, for now that previously would have allowed gatherings of people community centers, libraries, um, and, and so we are, not, we are not encouraging the congregation of, of groups of people that are more than uh, 50 people, and we keep reiterating what I said earlier for any gatherings that you have to um, maintain social distance of at least two meters and do the other practices that we're told about. We have a great staff here. Uh, great management team and great staff are very upbeat. They're very respectful of, of working together, but under these conditions that we've talked about, everybody is, is going above and beyond. The communication is very good uh, from the CAO and the, this um, uh, community control, emergency community control group, uh, the community that flows out through the CAO uh, and uh, and myself is is good and that's positive. Um, the uh, the unknown is what is concerning. Um, and where are we in the, the curve? Where how long is this going to last? Um, and how how severe is, is it going to get? What what's the next steps basically? And none of us are crystal ball readers to be able to know the details with respect to that. But staying positive, staying upbeat, staying open to communication. Uh, we also communicate with the county and other mayors and deputy mayors. I talked about the CAO communicating with other chief administrative officers. Uh, we as mayors uh, are communicating amongst ourselves and and uh, my deputy mayor is uh, and I are both on county council, so we're communicating with our our counterparts in other municipalities as well. Uh, be positive. Um, think of how uh, you can help your fellow uh, resident by being fair to them, uh, by being respectful, by uh, not ignoring uh, what is the right thing to do in this instance. Um, volunteer to help out um, those who are shut in uh, and don't have family necessarily, don't have loved ones to help out as much, and and help as best you can within the limitations that we're facing with this. Uh, but stay positive. This will pass. Um, it's it's a, a rather unique generational challenge. Um, I'm not a young buck, but I can't remember, and I didn't go through a war, uh, but this is probably the closest thing to a form of a war, a, a viral war, uh, that uh, that in my generation uh, we've gone through. We will look back and remember this, remember the challenges, and remember how we handled it, and remember the outcome, whatever that's going to be.